this episode, I go in search of Britain's rarest breeding damselfly at Sandwich Bird Observatory. Stefan, the warden at the site, was kind enough to show me round. This site has got a very special species, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, we're here to see the dainty damselfly, with about 95% of the UK population is found right here at Sandwich Bay. At this point, my microphone decided to die. I'd asked Stefan if the dainty damselfly was found across the site. Just in one area, actually. It's, it's quite restricted at the moment to what pools it uses. It's got a particular uh, habitat that it likes to use, but we're very hopeful it's going to spread across the wider Sandwich Bay area, particularly with all the wetland developments that's gone on recently. Yeah, it's, it's... Including Worth Marshes? It's everything. It's, it's Worth Marshes, it's Kent Wildlife Trust, it's Sandwich Bay Bird Observatory Trust, it's the farmers, it's the golf courses. There's this kind of mini landscape scale approach to wetland creation here. I then asked Stefan how he could tell the dainty damselfly from the other blue damselflies. Its name is dainty, so it is a slightly smaller, but it's probably not the best feature to look for. What you should look for is on the males, kind of two and a half black abdominal segments. It stands out quite, quite a lot from the distance. The pterostigma are pale, more like a willow emerald damselfly, for instance. Oh, yeah. They're twice as long as they are broad, and both males and females have these really distinctive lemon yellow underparts. Stefan was pretty confident we could find some, and we did in just a few minutes. You could clearly see the pale pterostigmas twice as long as they are broad, just as Stefan had mentioned earlier. Like many damselflies, they had a habit of hanging round in the rushes and long grass early in the morning, making clear shots hard to get with my long lens. We then found a tandem pair, which was joined by another male. Then another male decided to harass them. The activity then started to increase over the pond dainty damselflies jostling for the best perches. A tandem pair perched up near the pond, allowing a good look at those pale pterostigmas. They can vary a bit, these ones are a bit more orangey in colour. I then started chatting to Stefan as we looked over the pond and he shared some of his valuable knowledge, the sort you only get from observing a species in the wild on a regular basis. There literally is like no other species here, no. is there? You've got the odd ads here. They are around, like I said, I saw a small red eye earlier, and I get the odd variable or red eye or common blue. Particularly if you come in the afternoon, yeah. the dainties leave the pond. The dainties leave in the afternoon. Yeah. You come in the afternoon, you won't see any dainties out here. They're yeah. all in the grasslands around, but then you, all you see is azures and common blues. Yeah, there's a few blue tails sneaking in now, I can yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the behaviour changes throughout the day. Because you saw in the morning, yeah. they sp they're only in here kind of unpaired males, mostly. Yeah. Then they pair up and move out of the grass into the middle for the weed there and start ovipositing. And then they, they leave and yeah. split up and go into the grassland in the afternoons. A few pairs started to form around the pond. And then the egg laying started. Ruddy data appeared. Followed by a black tailed skimmer. Two more year ticks for me. Well, we've done pretty well today. I think we've done very well. Well, what do you reckon the final count is? I think somewhere around 150 at least. So 150 of arguably the rarest damselfly in the UK. Yeah. Not bad going, not bad going. No, very good morning. Yeah, we've had a few, we've had, what have we had? Four spot chaser, um, first common dart of the year. Yes, um, yeah. Did you, have, you had a small red eye, didn't you? Yes, yeah, small red eye damsel. That's the first one for me I've seen this year. Yeah. Uh, emerald damselfly as oh, yeah. well, black tailed skimmer. Not uh, bad, think, not bad. Quite a few. Yeah, and a common dart, and a common dart of it. You just said that, didn't you? That's, yeah, uh, yeah. sorry, there's flies attacking me. Yeah, um, yeah. well, that was a, a good day out, so thanks very much for that. Uh, and, uh, 
It's my pleasure, thank you. Yeah, so if people want to come visit, are you planning on running some trips over here next year? Yes, certainly. Get in touch during the winter yeah. and we'll probably be running trips to see dainty damselflies in June next year. Brilliant. And Or if you want to see other species in the area, mm. just drop us uh, a message at info at sbbot.org.uk. Brilliant, right, yes. If you didn't get all that, just literally Google um, Sandwich Bay Bird Observatory and I'll put a link in the description. But that wasn't the end of the day. Stefan took me down to the hide at Rest Harrow Scrape. He had seen some red veined darters flying around over the water and we were hoping to catch a glimpse of them. And we got one. It's that red blur you can see moving slowly across the screen. Another species for the list. I also spotted a common blue sitting on the path. Moving on to the next hide on the scrape, got some lovely bird sightings. This lapwing chick was wandering round. And then an Avocet chick went for a swim. But Mum wasn't very far away. But sadly, I didn't get any more red veined data sightings. I did briefly pop into Stobmarsh Nature Reserve on my way back and got the first Norfolk Corker I've seen in Kent. And I spent a few hours in the evening filming some little owls. And another rather special owl. But that's a subject for another video. If you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe. There's plenty more episodes to come and lots of wildlife videos. Thanks for watching.